Hey y'all, Matt Hepworth here, and today we're going to take a deep dive into using console with drums to create a drum submix that we can use as a stem, but also use for cue mixes and a simple one fader control for all the tracks instead of controlling them all individually. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in console, and as you can see, we've got our drum kit ready. We've got our kick, snare, hat, rack tom, floor tom, room, and this is the arc mic. And if you haven't seen my video for this, you should check it out right up here on the top. Then I have overhead left and right. So let's just get this dialed in really quick. So we have kind of a usable sound with a decent balance. Okay, there we go, we've got a decent balance. Now you've noticed I've muted the room. And the reason for that is I'm gonna use that separately. I'm gonna use that to use with Oceanway Studios. So one thing I'm noticing is it sounds like the snare is thin. So I think we have a phase problem with our overheads and our snare. So I'm gonna solo up the snare and the overheads. And for simplicity, I'm gonna link the overheads name that and let's check that out and see what's going on so there's definitely a problem there and one of the tools that I usually use for polarity since polarity is not built into the console on the non microphone channels I'm going to use the Neve Legacy 1073 SE. And the reason I like that one is because it takes almost zero DSP. It of course provides a polarity switch and it adds zero latency. So it's a perfect kind of utilitarian thing for me. Sometimes I'll use the high pass filter, um, but often I'll use the polarity switch on it. So let's see what happens there. Oh yeah, suddenly we have body on the snare. Take that back out. Now the snare is papery and thin. Flip the polarity again. Big difference, we might as well check the kick too, make sure that's okay. So unsolo the snare. There's the kick, we'll toggle it both ways. And the kick's not exactly in phase, but it actually works. The phase relationship is still good. So let's unsolo these and we'll start using a bus. So here's the power move. We're gonna right click and we're gonna copy this to aux one because we're about to use aux one as our bus. And as soon as I do this, you're gonna hear some phasing. And that's because the aux is not delay compensated. See that? So we're gonna switch this to pre, start muting our channels. And now unmute the aux. And there it is, we have a bus. So now that we have a bus, what do we want to do with it? Well, we have the single control, which is awesome. And that single control means our cue, our entire drums can be sent in balance to cues right here from one knob instead of having to do it across every single channel. So that's a huge benefit. But since we have a bus, not just an aux or a send, we can actually treat this just like we would a real drum bus. And that's gonna give us the ability to do things like creating a stem of our drums right out of the gate. So let's set this up. And the two compressors that I use for this is either the SSL G series compressor, the new one, 
or the older precision bus compressor. And the precision bus compressor, I kind of like the metering on it. Plus it's zero latency and it is patterned after the SSL before SSL was really a thing on UAD. So it works great for this. And it also has some in-between settings. So let's set that up and see what we get from that. So I'm gonna do four to one. I'm going to do my side chain to where the sub kick doesn't trigger. I'm gonna set my attack for about 10 milliseconds. And my release for round 0.3. And then I'm gonna drop my threshold until I'm seeing roughly 4 dB on snare. There we go. And now what we want to be sure of is we're not over compressing. So we're going to use the mix control. We're going to dial this back so we're only getting about two and a half dBs of real compression, blending the original signal back in. That's good. And then we'll use some makeup gain to bring it back up to speed. Off. Back. Yeah, makes a big difference. And now let's drop in an EQ. And I'm going to use the API 550. I'm going to use this filter, which rolls off the extreme top and bottom. And I'm going to use shelving on both of these. 5K. So this is giving us kind of that top down mix technique. Oh yeah, that's sounding good. A little bit goes a long way. Bypass it. Bypass both. Bring them in. Awesome. And, of course, one fader control. Now, I can also still EQ the individual channels. So I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, API 550 to the kick because the kick's not quite doing what I want. There we go. That's feeling better. And now let's bring this room into the equation. So we're gonna use aux2 for this. I'm gonna set up Oceanway. Dial in a good starting point. See what I need to tweak from there. Give that a second to load. And let's creep up some room. We need to switch that to pre. Okay, and here we go. There we go. Let's take that room out. Yeah, definitely adding a good benefit. Just add a little compression to that. I like the 1176 Legacy for this. Shift. So we're in kill mode. Maximize these. Restart our drummer. And I'm just looking for fast movement on the snare hits. About like that. And we'll bring it back up. There we 
we go. Now let's take that room out. Bring it back in. Fine tune it. Yeah, about where it was was good. There we go. We've got basically a processed, partially mix sounding result ready to go right here and we're still in console. We haven't even started recording. So let's switch over to Pro Tools really quick, set up the session and just check it. So tracks, new, we're gonna need six mono, six mono and three stereo. Kick, snare, hat, rack, floor, room, overs, drum submix, and stereo OWS rooms. Okay, so there are all our tracks. We're gonna mute that room mic because we're we don't really want to hear that. But one critical thing we need to do: switch back over really quick to console and make sure we commit the correction for phase and that extra little bit of kick tone that we're getting. Okay, so now let's just give it a go. And sharper eyes may have noticed that I didn't set any of these correctly. So we'll just set these up really quick. Skip ahead. Our drum submix is going to be aux one, left and right, and our room is going to be aux two, left and right. All right, let's record. So there it is, there's our drums. Each part's in there, everything works. And what we wanna do, mute all those. I just used option shift to click those other groups that weren't selected. Solo the submix. And this is exactly what we were hearing. So I'm gonna bring in the OWS with it, with solo safe. And that's it. Awesome. Two faders in Pro Tools is all we need. And back in console, two faders. And then of course, we have our cue controls. And this gives our mix, including all the processing, to our talent. So instead of having to use all these tracks, all we have to do is right there, aux one, use that as a cue, aux two, use that as a cue. Now again, this was a drummer oriented video, especially for drummers that record themselves. In other situations, you might actually need one of these auxes for a generic reverb, and that's okay. Um, but these days with Pro Tools where you can do persistent sends, there's kind of not a need for that. So mostly in console, I use the auxes as buses or things like that for special processing. I hope this is helpful. Thanks as always for watching. Matt Hepworth, see you next time. Mm -hmm.